The network has one of five players trying to run the most successful television network. Formal Ferret Games provided this in exchange for an honest review. I'll focus on the introductory game. The advanced game adds more network cards and some small tweaks, but isn't that different. Players begin with three starting shows and a low budget star and simple ad in their green rooms. Use your small amount of starting money to develop better shows to attract viewers, sign stars to get more people watching, and collect those sweet ad dollars. There are six show genres, each with a unique color and icon in the top left. Action, drama, reality, sci-fi, sitcom, and sports. Gray shows don't have a genre, and drama cards aren't used at low player counts. In the top right is the preferred time slot, 8, 9, or 10 p.m. The top left also has the development cost. Pay that to take and place the show in one of your three time slots. Rotate the replace show, then move it to your rerun slot. Replace shows lose all attached ads and stars. The black cube always starts on the top viewer row. As seasons pass, the cube slides down to show the changing audience numbers. In the first season only, these numbers may be lower if running a show outside of its preferred time slot. The cost in the top right represents the upkeep if you want that show to stay on the air each session. The bottom may show star and or ad icons. If colored, you must attach the star slash ads when you develop the show. If gray, you have the option to add them immediately or later. The numbers in the bottom right apply to reruns. Star cards also have a purchase cost and may have an upkeep cost. The bigger the star, the more viewers are attracted. Some have a condition at the bottom. If fulfilled, keep the card as is when sliding it under a show. If not, rotate the card to its worst side. Ads earn you money rather than costing you. Gain the landing bonus in the top left immediately and the top right income at the end of each season. Ads may also have conditions. Network cards give special abilities, earn you extra money, viewers, and so on. Cards with an exclamation point activate immediately. The X1 cards are one and done. Infinity cards have ongoing bonuses. Arrows applied to endgame scoring. Cards with an A are for the advanced game only. Cards with an I are the optional interactive cards and usually involve sticking it to opponents. On your turn, perform a single action. Draft from a number of shows, stars, ads, and network cards available depending on player count. Once you've acquired three or five shows of the same genre, gain the bonuses indicated on your player board. If you draft a star or add to your green room, don't forget to pay or earn the money on the card. If you draft a network card, use it or keep it as required. Another action is attaching a star or add from your green room to one of your on-air shows, as long as that show still has an available slot. Your turn ends once you drop in budget. Move your disc from the turn order track to the drop in budget track. Gain a choice of money or viewers, then wait until everyone else has finished their turns. Once the round ends, players pay their upkeep costs and earn income from attached ads. If you don't have enough money, you lose viewers. Add up viewers earned from your stars and shows, including reruns. Age your shows by sliding the black cubes down, move your reruns to the archives, and prepare for the next round. After the fifth round, score your shows one last time without paying costs. Score one point for each star still in your green room, plus any end of game network cards. The network with the most viewers wins. Draft stars and ads, develop shows, and know when to scrap a dying show for a new and exciting one. That's the networks. Once you know the networks, three or four people can play in an hour. Expect learning games to go as long as 90 minutes. There's a bit of grade two slash three reading and addition. There's planning ahead and reacting to a changing state. Experienced eight-year-old gamers could try the introductory game. Stick to a dining table with three or more. Play areas grow and the central area is big. In our fourth game of the networks, I swiped an interactive card that devastated mom, stealing an ad she desperately needed. I grabbed the network cards that boosted rerun viewers, then targeted those rare and valuable sports shows. I racked up viewers and crushed my parents. I love that shows in the networks parody real TV shows. Sometimes when I'm working on my next plan, I'll take something inspired by my favorite shows. What is your favorite doctor from Doctor What?
There are 30 network cards and the advanced variant adds 20 more. This gives you a lot of variety because you only use around half in each game. The interactive variant adds 12 cards, but I like nastiness and wish there were more. I'm happy that these are optional for people who prefer friendlier games. It's way too easy to slide or bump the cards, sometimes leading you to miss an ad or just cause a general mess of things. I love a deluxe edition with special boards or a playmat with defined areas. I mean, if you really wanted to go deluxe, maybe redesign things to use those card crafting sleeves like in Mystic Veil, Edge of Darkness, and so on. The graphic design is great. Everything is super clear from the icons and layout to the vibrant colors. I like that they added a scoring track on your board to help with the math of scoring your viewers each round. I love the card drafting. There's a show I need to fill in a dying time slot, but it needs two ads and I only have one. If I take the ad, someone might steal my show. There is a network card that'll let me gain an ad, but I still risk losing my show. Maybe I take a show from the wrong slot to protect myself. Which one has the smallest difference in viewers? That penalty can stink, but it only affects the first season. That's good, because the game would be boring if everyone's only taking the least bad option. You can maybe bridge the difference with the right star, or even a promo ad. It's a thematic game with decisions that make sense. The turn order mechanism is cool. If you don't have a great action plan, drop out and take the money or viewers. Maybe you didn't necessarily need either, but now your rival can't have them. The Networks is a card drafting game that, despite its sense of humor, offers tactical gameplay, lots of replayability, and plenty of choices. Don't expect laughs like a party game, but the jokes and art keep things light. This is especially good if you just mess with someone to ruin their plans, like I did to mom in story time. The introductory game isn't enough for me. The advanced and interactive variants are the only way I'll play from now on. With that said, the game falls just short of being as crunchy and thinky as I would like it to be. Good thing there are a handful of expansions, and it just so happens that I'll be reviewing one, the executives, in a few days.